Um, let me turn my attention, since we're on this theme of, of uh, chart manipulation, to the drawn objects down here. I just want to discuss these tools that are available. Um, the, um, the first one here isn't so much a drawn object, but a, the ability to resize the graph. You click on this item right here. And what's nice about this is that you can create as much uh, space on the x or y axis uh, as you like. And the reason this is useful is uh, if you're looking at, at, at trends or studies that are going out into the future, uh, you can see the future without the prices, of course, but you can, you know, here we got the year 2019 on our screen. You, know, you can project into the future to your liking, or if you want to see how high or low a particular security might go, you can create that additional uh, price depth by manipulating the chart any way you like. This is, this is tremendously useful, I think. Uh, I tend to keep a little room on all three flexible sides, just so that in my mind's eye, I can um, project what I think is, is going to happen next with the stock. So that, that's, uh, that's the expand tool. The others are more straightforward uh, drawn objects. Just walking through these, uh, we have here the trend line, uh, just a straight line. We have the channel, which is two parallel trend lines. Uh, we have the horizontal line, which is just that. We have the text note so that you can not only uh, put a note uh, on any particular part of the chart, but if you've got a particularly lengthy note, you know, if you've gone for paragraphs, if you like, uh, you can uh, wax prosaic there, and it'll just put an icon so that you can capture particular things you want to say about a point in time on a particular instrument, and it'll preserve that. Uh, you also have the ability to highlight. You can highlight with, uh, with ovals. With, uh, with rectangles, and, and as always, you can change the colors and opacity of any of these. You've also got my personal favorites through the Fibonacci. You've got retracements, time series, arcs, and fans. Um, and you'll notice as I go through some of my charts, you'll see a lot of Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci studies on there. So um, uh, the, the, the thing I like most about these drawn objects is that they um, are very forgiving. You don't have to have surgeon's hands to get things in exactly the right place. If I, for example, on this fan, haven't drawn it quite right for Apple, uh, I can zoom in, double click on it, and these anchor points allow me to put it anywhere that I want it to be. And I, I've actually chosen an option which uh, anchors sort of like a magnet. It, it kind of clings to the lowest part of that price bar so that I can, pr uh, that I can place it quite accurately because what good is uh, what good is technical analysis without accurate information? So now I've got a nice, perfectly placed uh, fan as I as I wanted in the first place. Now, um, directing your attention over to the left side here, uh, of the modules that are available, and there are, there are quite a few. The one that is always on my screen are the watch list. And there's a reason for that. Um, I trade a lot, and I pride myself in being a very organized trader. Um, and so I keep things in these watch lists. Now, oftentimes I'll see someone have a watch list, but they'll have one, and it'll have everything they follow in it. And I don't think that's very useful. It's sort of like having a filing cabinet with just one giant file in it. And I've actually, it, it's, it may seem simple what you're looking at, but, but the watch list I have are the result of many years of refinement because I've, I've finally got a system that I, that I really like, and it means a lot to me. So I'll just, I'll just briefly describe what these watch lists represent to me. Um, the first couple here I call assess and assess secondary. These, these are the core things that I really want to be aware of. As you can imagine, it's the, the big indexes uh, and the secondary are things that are important but not quite as important. So for example, the interest rates. Or what is gold doing? What is uh, what are the forex markets doing? So in the span of a couple of minutes, what I can do is just put my put my finger on the down arrow, and I can just thumb through each of these and get a sense as to what the markets in general are doing and what different angles of the market are doing. You know, what about commodities? What about currencies? What about the? Uh, how about if I'm looking at this at two in the morning? What are what are the um, uh, globex markets doing? Uh, that kind of thing. 
so these these are my uh, principal places that I'm going to pay attention. Uh, the next two here, bear pen and bull pen. These are places that I corral uh, items that I'm seriously considering taking long or short positions on. Uh, you'll note the numbers after these uh, list names. These are the quantities of items inside each of these. So here in my bear pen, these are items I do not have a position in them. Uh, I'm not about to pull the trigger, but I'm, I'm, I'm really watching these closely. Uh, I might be placing a position on them the next day, or I might, they might be such um, alluring charts that I just really want to watch them on a day-to-day -day basis to see what kind of, uh, you know, take, take this for example, uh, Ann Taylor's stores. Um, this is not a chart that I was short, but if this climbed up to 18 or so and really started struggling, I would find this very enticing. So it's something I want to keep an eye on, uh, whereas others of these might be uh, more imminent. Um, this, for example, it, this is a sensational chart, but it's pretty good. And it, it's, it's close enough to a lifetime high uh, that it, it's, it's uh, kind of enticing to me. So this is a bear pin and bull pin, places that I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on things and, and might uh, take a position on soon. The, the next grade up from those is uh, candidate. Candidate, uh, candidate is long, candidate is short. Uh, if I see something, let's say that it's Monday and the market's open, and let's say, for example, that um, I decide that I want to buy, that, I, that I, I'm very serious about CBS. So I might move that from my bull pin to candidates long. So I could just drag and drop CBS into candidates long. So it's sort of like I've taken it out of one file folder and put it into another. So this is kind of... Uh, uh, right in the batting cage. It's, 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 uh, I'm, I'm ready to get into this position. I'm ready to place an order on it. Uh, and and the, the kind of uh, lowest level here is my core list. As you can see, there are over 600 items in this. This is just kind of everything else. So if you're going to think of, of uh, these in terms of graduating, uh, the core list is where things are that I just look at. Uh, bullpen and bear pen are things which have moved from core list to very seriously considering the position. Then I move them into candidates long or short, which is that I'm, I'm ready to place a trade. And once I've actually placed the trade, I, I would move those into an actual portfolio. Um, I've got a few different portfolios here. I've got my uh, IRA. I've got a personal account, which is full of puts right now. Uh, and I've got a trust account, which has uh, four longs, all of them uh, ultra bear positions and then 66 shorts. So I follow, and this is actually a pretty light light load for me. I, I've, there have been times that I've been uh, in 200 different um, positions, and the reason I'm able to handle so many is I like to think because I'm I'm really well organized about um, tracking these things. So uh, the, the the watch list and the ability to move things from here to there and, and keep them sequestered in that way is is terribly helpful for me. I also have one list. Um, dedicated strictly to ETFs, uh, the exchange-traded funds that have become so terribly popular. And in going through these, I actually find there's, there's, a, there's a couple of valuable aspects to ETFs. One is, naturally, they are very handy proxies of the market anyway. Uh, if you're looking at the likes of DIG and DUG and FAS and FAS and SRS and SKF and all the rest of them, uh, you can get a, a good sense as to what's happening out there. Take, for example, DZZ. Uh, this is the uh, double short on gold. Um, nice little trend line here. Nice little update on Friday. I am long this. Uh, so uh, that adds a little weight to my own, uh, for the time being, bearishness uh, on precious metals. 